everybody. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, depending on where in the world you're watching from and what time of day you're watching from as well. I just realized, Terry, my microphone was kind of far away. You ever have that happen? You're like ready to go and then you're like, your mic's kind of not there. I'm going to keep playing with the light the entire time we're on here. So at some point it'll be blinding <laughs> everyone. Yeah. It, so same, same. Yes. Yeah. Same, same, same. Good. All right. Well, I want to welcome our audience and thank you all so much for joining us. Um, whether you're watching live or in replay, we'd love it if you could drop a comment below, especially for our live viewers, because right now we're going live on three networks on LinkedIn, on YouTube, and on Instagram. So wherever you're watching us from, just say hello from Detroit. Hello from Fraser. Hello from White Lake. Hello from Canada, wherever you're joining us from in the world. That lets us know that the live stream is picking up and also lets us know who's watching. Because this is the, the beauty of being live, Terry, as you know, is you get to reach people from across the world. One of the challenges is sometimes we can't see our audience until they get into the comments, right? 100%. And, you know, it's like we time shift all the things we do in our personal life. So the idea of people being like, oh, I'm going to be right there right now at noon. And it's like, yeah, you'll get here when you get here and we'll see when you do. Yeah, there you go. And that's part of the reason I do these shows starting at 12.05. I'm always thinking, well, if you've got meetings back to back or maybe your last meeting ended at 11, you need to grab lunch, bio break, and get in front of the computer. You got five minutes before my show starts. Um, at any it. rate, so while wonderful. we're watching, there you go. While we are waiting for any of those comments to start coming in, Terry, um, I'm going to just let you talk a little bit about yourself. And I've known you for, I want to say, 2008, 2009, 2010. It's been a bit, though, since we've known each other. And I know a bit about you and, and what you're doing with your business, but I'd like you to take a few minutes and tell people, what do you do? Who do you help? And what do you help them with? Yesterday was our 15 year anniversary, Brenda. It I was? Facebook memories. Yep. And oh, wow. I, I commented on the post, but I didn't actually tag you. But we had, we had debated whether or not it was an Automation Alley event. And it was, yeah. and it was the one I, I mentioned where I had met Dave Fanick from Kelly mm -hmm. Services and, uh, and a few other people that were at that. And Scott Monty and Derek Maraban and Charlie Wahlberg. And wow. I mean, so, so many legends was, uh, under one roof. That was like the We Are the World video of, of Southeast Metro Detroit marketing. We were all like in the one, in the room where it happened. Right? It was, absolutely. <laughs> and no one got shot. Not a bad thing. Not bad. <laughs> it was very nice. No, yeah. That, so that was that was literally yesterday's Facebook memory because we were talking about it. so 15 years, 2009. So for me, I spent most of my time helping people grow. And, and it could be you as an individual. It could be you as a brand. It could be your company and a brand. And it could be your entire culture and company as a whole, right? Your actual business. I deliver uh, the goods, as I like to call them, through speaking, training, and coaching. I don't coach everybody. I'm pretty selective in where I spend time uh, and a little bit selective on where I'll speak and train as well, but less so. I love the idea of helping people reach new audiences, think new thoughts, and get connected to the ideas, the opportunities, and the people they need to grow. That's me. That's awesome. And you do it so well, Terry. And uh, I remember that day being in the room with you and like, oh my gosh, Terry Bean, like he's this legend. And I think it was probably the, I don't know if it was the first I heard of you or not, but then we connected and we've, we've um, remained connections and grown to become friends over the years as well. And it's, it's been just such a joy to watch your journey and to continue to support you by the sidelines. And today we're talking, my friends, you can see the topic right above us here. It's mindset matters, building you your business and your brand. And this is definitely something you've got down pat here, Terry. So uh, for folks that are watching, what advice do you have for us? You know, it really starts with understanding the difference between what your mindset is right now and what it could be as it expands. So let's look at the two different types of mindsets that most people are familiar with. You have a fixed mindset, 
you know, the one that's going to keep you exactly where you are. Everything's safe. Everyone's comfortable. You know, we're all kind of huddled in. Like, uh, you know, I like Guardians of the Galaxy as a movie. And at the very end, when Groot puts his little branches around and huddles all the Guardians together before they, you know, kind of blow up. <laughs> it's like this nice, warm, cozy cocoon. Um, mm -hmm. Fun fact about that. Even the butterfly who spends a bunch of time in the cocoon, right? The caterpillar goes in, cocoons up, and, you know, there's some metamorphosis. There's some change going on, but they can't stay in the cocoon and grow, right? Mm -hmm. They have to basically destroy the cocoon to grow into the butterfly. And to me, that's the symbolism of the growth mindset, right? Where you're outside of the comfort zone. You're looking at things in a different way. Your perception is wide open. You're not just limited and focused on things you know, but you're creating new experiences and new opportunities and new connections and relationships. And so there's there's my, here's my opening gambit. What do you think? Fixed mindset <laughs> versus growth mindset. Uh, absolutely. Growth mindset. And I have to believe like from watching you grow in yourself and your business over the years, this is something that you've applied yourself into your own journey. Is this something you're also helping others with or tell me a little bit about that? Yeah. So let me, let me start by complimenting you and your beyond growth mindset into the mm -hmm. abundant mindset, right? So, yeah. you know, there's layers of everything. And when you mm -hmm. reach that abundant space, you fully recognize that, there's more than enough for me and everybody else. And you start sharing and you start collaborating and you bring people on your platform and give them the opportunity to share with your audience. That's you, lady. That's all you. So thank you for <laughs> can, that. Can I just interrupt you right now? Because um, people that have been following me for a while, you frequently hear me talking about co-opetition. And I will always give credit to this guy right here, Terry Bean. And I'll say, I heard it first from Terry. And Terry will say, and you heard it from a a book, some author. Is that right? Uh, so I said comparison a bunch of times, right? I like okay. was like, hey, we got to take our competitors and we got to cooperate with them. That sounds like comparison. And then one day I read coopetition and I was like, damn, that's a way better word. That's a way better word. I started 313D Love. It's now known yeah. as 313 Day way better word, right? So I've got lots of good ideas, but they need to be shaped a little bit to get to great. Oh, well, I, I give you the shout out every time I use that phrase coopetition. And back in the day, I used to have a LinkedIn rock stars list where I would like publish and I had yeah. some LinkedIn trainers and coaches. And then I had people that were just really awesome on the platform. And then I had people that were like a hundred thousand followers and above. And it, I did run that for a few years, but I would frequently talk about, you know, like, why would I shine the spotlight on other people that are doing the same thing that I do? And it is, it all comes back to that abundance mentality and that spirit of competition. And every time I use that word, I'm like, heard it from Terry Bean, because I never like to take credit. I'm like, that was him. But it, I think that's, would you say that's part of the abundance mentality is not like being so selfish and taking credit for things where you can give it to others? Would you agree with that? Absolutely. And so, you know, we talk about the idea of shining the light on others, mm -hmm. right? And, and it positions you in a really good way. One of the reasons I tell people to write a recommendation on LinkedIn is you get to live rent free on someone else's profile. Mm -hmm. And a well-written recommendation is going to say as much about you as it does the person you're writing about. And I love those aspects. But what I know about shining the light, and in what I've witnessed and experienced over the last, you know, 17, 18 years of being a consistent lighthouse is occasionally that light reflects back on you too, mm -hmm. right? So not only are you going to make somebody's day, make them feel better, put them in a better position, uh, there's a little selfish, altruistic nature that goes into some of that too. And mm -hmm. so sometimes... Uh, the people that are abundantly selfish might need to look at it from, oh, I'm going to get something out of this. So I'm going to encourage you, selfishy people, to give too because <laughs> you might find some value. Those of us who do it because it's just the right thing to do and it feels good to serve other people, you don't need encouragement. You're going to do it anyway. 
but, but even for those people who might feel like they're just doing this, you know, just for the goodness of others and for society and to help others. I mean, come into the day, Terry, um, you know, this show, I call it enthusiastically self-employed. And you and I cannot be enthusiastically self-employed unless we have people paying for our services. So we we have to make money. We have to deliver value so that people are saying nice things about us and they were getting those referrals. But if we want to have this, you know, this abundance mentality and we are being, giving it forward, I love how you say like, yeah, giving a recommendation, you're doing it for them, but there may be this that little ulterior motive, like you're gaining real estate on your profile that might motivate you to do so. But I mean, we are business owners. We we have to make money to stay in business. Otherwise, we got to go find one of those corporate jobs and and get back into it again, right? But yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong. But I love how like sometimes you got to appeal to those a bit of those those selfish or those bottom line business senses. I think that's what you're saying, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Because to your point, you don't stay self-employed unless the cash register is not ringing. Right. And, and, and the way I, I won't speak for your world, but the way my world works, there are times when that roller coaster gets dangerously close to smashing into the ground. And yes. like, mm-hmm. I don't know what I'm going to do other than I'm going to sit here and pick up all the pieces, put them back together and start again, um, again, again. Right. Because that's yeah. kind of the mindset piece, too, is there's nothing nothing that can truly derail you except for you. And Mm -hmm. so if you take some level of ownership of that and some responsibility, uh, I have a friend of mine that used to always say, nobody is coming to save you. And in that thought process is, you know, it puts you out on an Island all by yourself in the middle of an ocean. And it's empowering as all get out that says, listen, if it is to be, it is up to me, right? Those 10 mm-hmm. powerful two-letter words. And and we have to keep that in mind. That said, we can't run around just doing things full-heartedly because we're, you know, oh, well, my mindset's straight and I'm going to just keep smashing my face into this wall regardless of how bloody it gets. <laughs> so that's a that's a challenge. I don't know. I I don't know. You've been really locked in on doing LinkedIn and marketing and helping people get their slice of the pie for a long, long time. Um, what kind of iterations have you changed in your business over the, you know, I'm trying to remember when we first met at the office in Royal Oak. It feels like it was 2016, 2017. Uh, time. Yeah. So I, when I left, I left corporate. Is that where you're th- referring to that meeting when I, after yeah. I had left corporate and ha- had I made the decision I was done with corporate at that time, or was I still on the fence? You were, you were fence sitting and we had a conversation about the pros yeah. and cons of both. You had some interviews right. set up and yeah. you were talking about, maybe I should do this consulting. Yeah. And then I was I was reaching out to my trusted network, like the people that I knew were rocking it along the sidelines and and seemed to be really enjoying it and seemed to be successful. And I was kind of like interviewing you all, like, how did you make it happen? And am I crazy for thinking about going over to this side of the world and and not staying on this side? But um, I knew that and we're here talking today about mindset matters, building you, your business and your brand. And what I have always known about Terry, and if you follow Terry, you know, drop a comment and let me know right now. But if you follow Terry, you know that there are certain things that are true. Um, Terry's a really smart guy. He's super connected. He's always willing to to make referrals or to, to help you. And he's a, he's a big believer of this abundance mentality and pay it forward. But I consistently get value from you. And I'm on your email list. I follow your social media posts. We're here on LinkedIn. We're on Facebook together. And, um, you know, there's so many things that when you go through the process of like thinking about where you want to go with your business, um, paths that you can go on. But I've always been a believer of like, I don't need to create that path. Let me look at other people and how they've done it. And I think that was part of our conversation. Like, how did you do it? You know, because it seems to me a pretty like a lot of us grew up with like corporate is the path you go through. You go to college, you get your job, you move up to the C-suite, you keep climbing the ladder. And then at some point you're like, wait a minute, there's a whole other path. Like, how do you get off? You know, how do, how do you get off the corporate ladder and move on to this new path? Um, did you do the same kind of thing going through your journey, Terry, or how did you get there? God, no. If someone pushed the ladder over and I just <laughs> jumped. 
<laughs> you get out of here. Um, I was I was 27, I think. The mm-hmm. first time I entered the world of entrepreneurship, I was a recruiter doing some staffing in the IT space right before Y2K, so 98 timeline. And, and I started looking at what the compensation model, right? I'm like, wait a second. I'm doing 100% of the work and getting 24% of the compensation. Right. This is really dumb. I, why do I do this? And so I was like, I could do this on my own. They don't. They didn't have any name recognition. It was a small local firm in Columbus, Ohio. You know, the the parent company people knew they were award winning, but the division I was in was like started by the son-in-law or something. And it was like, this is dumb. I go do this on my own. And Mm -hmm. and that that freedom that everybody Mm -hmm. loves to talk about, that uh, ability to do what you want with who you want was Mm -hmm. gorgeous to me. And the idea of I'm gonna I'm gonna find out what I'm really worth right now. And Mm -hmm. I set an audacious goal, you know, for me, I wanted to earn $50,000 in a three month period. And Mm -hmm. and I'd never done anything like that at that time. I was 27. Um, And I failed. I I earned $46,500 in that. Wait a minute. You failed by five hundred dollars. Can we just like re- like rewind for just a second here? Fail, can we, massive, can we, massive. Can fail. we re rewind and reframe a little bit? Yeah, that's, that's not, like it was. That's one was of the best good. stories I've ever heard, right there. Yeah, no, and so and it was yeah. like it was addictive, right? And and so I did that for a couple of years. I moved back up here to Detroit in two thousand. And I had been running a networking group down in Columbus, Ohio. So I had this, like, I was, I was pretty sure I was like within three degrees of anybody in town there. And, and when I came up here, I was like, Whoa, I, I know my college buddies. I know some friends from family. Yeah. And I, you know, that was it. And so I, I kind of had to restart and, and do it all over again. And I never found, I didn't immediately find what I had in Columbus. Mm -hmm. And like a good entrepreneur, I created it, right? That's where Motor City Connect started in 2005. I was like, I need a group like I had. And so I partnered with somebody and we started that. And, you know, we were going to start a LinkedIn group for Motor City Connect. But back in 05, LinkedIn wasn't handing out LinkedIn groups like they were chicklets like they do now. Right. right? Everybody can get one today. I couldn't get a link. Did you were you ever involved in that LinkedIn Detroit local meetup or was that I, I kind of in my mind I feel like you were, but maybe I'm I'm I didn't the motor- start it. I got roped into it and yeah. I'm still an admin on that page. I don't know mm-hmm. if anything's happened. Uh Christy Olson Cott was one of the people that was yeah. involved in it. And okay. so she had reached out and said, Let's do an event together. And I was like, All mm-hmm. right, first wine sounds fun. Let's go. And so she, uh, she's a trip. I don't know if you've ever met her in person. She's. A, I have. She's she a, was at the, uh, the, the LinkedIn. Oh, a-thon. she was at the LinkedIn Athon. Yeah. Right. Remember, yeah, this yeah. is before it was LinkedIn Live Athon. It was like the LinkedIn Athon, and this was in 2019 because I think it was the summer before the pandemic and the world changed, and you know now we're kind of coming back to it. But yeah, I met I met her in person through that. But you remind me of, um, and I can't think of the name in the movie. Maybe you'll, as I've described it, like if you pull a person out of a situation and you you take them down to nothing and you put them in another situation, they will build themselves back up to where they were all over again. And I can't think of the name in the movie, but take Terry out of Columbus where you were an Uber networker and you knew everyone, you were three degrees away and move Terry to Metro Detroit. Terry will do that all over again. Cause that is in your DNA. And, and we're here today talking about, you know, mindset matters, building you, your business and your brand. You will be that. I see that at least Terry, you will be that wherever you go. It might take you some time to rebuild it, but you will be that wherever you go. Would you agree with that? I, you know, it's interesting because just between you and I, right? Nobody else is paying attention anyway. I've contemplated <laughs> leaving. Sierra, we finally got a comment. Thank you, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it, Ken. You're ruining my theory that no right. one's paying attention. No, I can't. If Ken's here, I can't even say it now. It's over. Yeah. No, I, I'm like, there's a part of me that's like looking at what's next, right? 
I'm yeah. not going to stay in the Detroit area forever. I'm going to go somewhere because, yeah. you know, for a myriad of different reasons, it's probably about time to do that. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not doing it anytime soon. This isn't a formal I was going to say, does your wife know, should you be announcing this on LinkedIn without talking to the <laughs> family <she's>, first? <laughs> yeah. like, we're, you know, we're debating which, which beach, right? Where, which oh, yeah. island are we looking at is, is the big mm-hmm. conversation in my house. Um, all that said, uh, I will probably end up doing it all over again. Right. And, and it it's not again. because I want to, it's because it's who I am. Mm-hmm. Right at my core, I it says your guide to connectedness under my name. I'm a connector, right? I'm a promoter. Yeah. I'm a guy that uh, is is here to serve, and that's my that's my belief that we're all here to serve. And so, yeah. is a is you know. What, what do they say? Uh, be the example of the change you want to see in the world. Isn't that a Gandhiism, yep. right? Be mm-hmm. the change you want to see in the world. And so I just try and live that to the to the, my best ability. My secret little goal every single day is to connect three people to opportunities that are going to make their lives better, right? And awesome. I've been doing that for, I don't know, 16, 17 years. And it's just kind of low key and subtle and introduce here and there. And, you know, sometimes I get to go do 300 at a time if I'm on stage. Right. That's there you go. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I count those. Yeah. I I see Annette remembered our movie. It's trading, trading places. I think Dan Aykroyd and it was it Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy. Yeah. Great. Dan was like the big executive and they, they did. I don't remember what they did in the movie, but like they pulled him out of the situation and he had to like build in his, his career back up again. But um, Annette's King is kind of the nature versus nurture. And um, they bet a I, dollar. That was the, that? Big, the, the brothers that own the big stock uh, company. They bet a yeah. dollar that they could That's make right. him poor and make Eddie Murphy act like That's a wealthy right. fella. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it all is kind of the end of the movie. And then there was even like, a scene um, that they pulled from that movie that they did like as a feature in, was it coming to America? It was like, they pulled out a feature. It was nice how they do a little bit of a, a bridge there, but um, you know, I think it comes down to, I mean, you, you know, when you are, you do have the right mindset in place, right. You can create whatever you want, whatever type of success you want out of it. Um, but I also want you to touch on, you know, what's the different differentiation between you if you are a solopreneur in your business, in your brand, is there, or what's, what would you say is the difference there? I, I think there's, I think there's a, not even an arm length, right? I think there's about mm-hmm. a hand length of distance uh, between you and your brand as a solopreneur. And mm-hmm. so it's interesting we're having this conversation because I was just doing a review of my website with a friend of mine who is uh, unbiased and willing to share openly right? And provide that real deal feedback as opposed to that blowing smoke feedback, which isn't really that helpful. Um, So for me, it's like, I want to pour as much of who Terry Bean is into and through that brand. So I Mm -hmm. want you to feel it, right? I want to create an emotional and an energetic connection with the people that are thinking about working with me. And I want to put an energetic repulsion to the people who are not going to be a good fit for me. I use some of that stuff to disqualify people long before there's any conversation and I'm fine with it. Right. If I don't like finding out we're not a fit after we've signed an agreement or after we've started doing the work, I want to find that out before I even meet you. I don't want to meet you. That's okay. There's plenty of people that you're going to love and that you will love working with you. Maybe we're not that. That's okay. It's so funny you you talk about this because like repelling the wrong people. And if you're a new entrepreneur, a new solopreneur, new to being self-employed, you're probably like Terry and I did in the beginning. You will take any and all clients and jobs and requests and they'll say, can you build a website? Yeah, I can build a website. Can you do social media management? Yeah, I can do social media management. What I really love to do is LinkedIn, but I will do anything because I just need to get this thing off the ground. And then at some point you start going, no, it's not really a service that I do, but I can refer you to someone else. And then 
it's almost like if, if I think about it, there's like a timeline. Then there's a point in time where you start firing prospects before they become clients. Like you're not, you know, you pull yourself out of that scenario because you know it's not going to be a good fit. And not in a negative way, not like in a mean way, like you're a bad person. I don't want to work with you. It's right. just, I don't think that we would be a, a good fit, but I wish, wish you the best of luck. Would you agree? And do you have anything to add to that? A million trillion percent. One, we start off with a line card that's like this. We got into business to do this thing that we really love. Absolutely. And like you said, somebody says, oh, hey, you were really good at this. Can you do this? Oh, of course I can do that. Now our line card's this. Now our mm -hmm. line card's this and this and this. Yeah. And now five years in, we're doing a bunch of crap we can't stand. And mm -hmm. if we would have been really in intentional about referring that stuff out, we would have built a stronger business. We would have built a stronger network, right? Mm -hmm. Where we're focused on the core offering that we love and supporting a great community of referral partners that we can exchange opportunities with, which is an amazing way to go. And that speaks to that abundant mindset. Mm -hmm. um, and we're not frustrated. Our clients are happier and we're living in our sweet spot instead of Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. As far as the dealing with people we don't want to deal with, um, I don't think you can start that too early. Yeah. <laughs> really, I really, I but it's, really. It, you, you come from a place of knowledge and wisdom saying that now, I mean, talk to Terry back in the first year of his business and, and you would not have, I probably would not have been able to convince yourself otherwise. Cause that Terry was like, no, we need money. We need income. We need to keep this thing afloat. And it's really hard to say no, even though in, in the back of your mind, you might be going, yes, yeah, probably not a great fit, but I just need the money. I got I got fired. Well, I didn't get fired. I got laid off from my last real job before joining the insurance company for a minute during COVID. Uh, in 2007, I got let go from a telecom company because they had basically downsized 500 people and I was a recruiter. They're like, we're not really hiring. You can go now. And uh, in yeah. the interim of knowing that was coming, I got introduced to somebody that needed some recruiting work. And mm -hmm. I was, he was a sales, uh, he owned a, a, it doesn't matter. He owned a sales company and I was recruiting yeah. salespeople for him. And I met with him one day and he yelled at his uh, admin person up and down one side and the other. And I was uncomfortable. I was 35. So this is my second, wow. uh, my second foray, well, technically third into self entrepreneurship. And I said to him at one point, I'm like, this is really uncomfortable. Should I, should I go out and wait in the hallway while you finish this conversation? And he said, you'll just sit there and it'll be fine. Oh. he wanted oh. did he want you to see it do you think like was he doing it for show like banging his chest and making his admin feel bad and then having another person watching it do you think it was it was just who he was right it was so oh, weird terrible. and so i'm in there to recruit people to join his company he hands me the retainer check i leave i go home i tell my wife who knows that you know this little bit of money is more than i'm going to be making for a minute you need it um yeah and I told her, I'm like, I'm sick to my stomach. I can't even imagine bringing people in. She's like, you'll do the right thing. And I said, mm -hmm. all right, you're right. And I walked back in there the because it was over the weekend. And mm -hmm. I, I was supposed to meet with him first thing on Monday or Tuesday morning in my car. I left my car running. And he's like, hey, your car's still on. And I said, yeah, I'm not staying. He's like, what do you mean you're not oh, staying? I'm like, I yeah. came here to give you this money back. There's no way I could bring people into this environment and feel good about it. No chance. Oh. Right. Let, so, let me ask you a question. So, so, so now, nowadays you have many friends in the HR and leadership and training and development community. In the, given that situation, is there someone you know now that could help to improve the culture and his mindset? Um, on paper, a million percent. In okay. practice, yeah. yeah. I'm I'm pretty good at fixing people, right? Like I'm <laughs> I'm pretty good, and I like I mean maybe I wasn't quite ready for that challenge. Maybe 50, however old I am now. That was a today. while back, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is it was 08, so yes, yeah, 16 years ago. So yeah, it's yeah he was a flipping. Mess. But if the person has to be open to those suggestions and open to improving and open to knowing that 
that's a toxic culture. And in, in this scenario, the person's like, no, I wanted you to see it, you know? So there's nothing that he thought that he wasn't embarrassed about it. He wasn't, you he know, wasn't. thinking there was he anything was wrong with it. Proud but, of it. He was uh, yeah. just disgusting, right? Just disgusting. Mm -hmm. And so that to me is a, is a fixed mindset, right? That's, mm -hmm. that's, this is how we do it. This is how we're always going to do it. Right. And you know, it's your problem, not mine. Right. He yeah. saw, nothing wrong with it and you know people like that sometimes uh find some rewards and they find some success and it's unfortunate but it's very real it's very real yeah yeah and so. it's it's funny how um you know things kind of you you come i don't want to say full circle but you you grow and evolve yourself as you and your business and your brand you're growing and evolving as well and um you know I just see you as this powerhouse, Terry, and you're just such a positive person. And and I have to tell a quick story. Um, when I was first getting my business off of the ground, I called you one day and I didn't say who I was. And I thought you knew who I was. And I, you remember this conversation? And I was pricing. I, this is the kind of um, this. This will just show you that Terry is such a quality person, but he's also a good business person as well. And I called him and I said, I'm working on this proposal. And I didn't introduce myself because I'm thinking we've talked before. He has my number in the phone and I probably should have said, hey, it's Brenda. But at any rate, we started a conversation, small talk, how are things going, blah, blah, blah. And I said, I'm working on this proposal and I'm not sure how much to charge for training for LinkedIn. And I know you do training for LinkedIn. So, you know, I don't know if I said, how much would you charge or how much do you charge? Or this is what I'm charging. Is that okay? But I kind of said, what do you think? And, you know, your response was something to the effect of, you know, well, you know, hey, I'm happy to help you, but kind of want, don't want to be giving all my cards out there. And, you know, what's to say? I, I don't remember what your response was, but you wouldn't give me everything. And I was like, and it felt very unnatural for you to say that to me. And I kind of said, Terry, I said, I'm, I'm surprised that you say that. And you're and I don't know if you said it first, who is that? Or if I said, you know, this is Brenda. And then you're like, oh, my gosh. Because that was my, my, you know, <laughs> what was, it was your a side switch, of that? right? They were, oh, yeah, it was oh well, here, take it all, Brenda. I had no idea yeah. it was you. In that, I, yeah. honest to God, I, I was, I was driving by a Novus, a Novi campus of a particular college when that happened. That campus okay. is gone now, and I remember that call like it was yesterday. So Same, yeah, a hundred percent. You, I said, all right, well, who is this? And you told me who it was. And I was like, oh, oh, well, yeah, you can totally have all the information. But yeah, well, and it no was, clue. but I, I respected you because if it was some random person calling that you didn't know, I respected the fact that you weren't going to like play all your cards out and say, this is how much I charge and this is what I do. Um, but I was like, you know, then I was like, well, Terry, it's me. Like we've had these conversations, you know, like I was surprised and you're like, oh my God. And then the conversation completely changed. And I don't even remember who the client was and whether I got the business or not, but um, you've always just, you know, had such a great reputation of being a connector and being a giver and, and helping others in the community. So I was so delighted to, you know, have the chance to bring you on the show here today because your business has grown and changed and evolved. And you're currently, I don't know if you're, is, is the website, is that part of it, that change for your business and the new shift and the new focus? Is that kind of being led in part by the evolution of your brand? So, you know, I took a, I took a hiatus from being Terry Bean and went to do the insurance thing during uh, COVID. Uh, yeah. I had a coaching client that said, come here and run sales for me. We're going to do this. And I was like, all right, cool. So I, I went through and I unbranded and rebranded. And then we hit success like two years faster than we thought we were going to. So I was like back on the street. If I would have known it was going to be a year, I might not have gone through all these iterations. But yeah. so it was a year and I was back on the street again. And I'm like, all right, well, let's do all the things differently. And yeah, so I redid, I did, I started with the logo and came up with that and came up with a really clear value proposition and where I'm spending time and energy. And then I did the website and then I got a new system at the end of last year through uh, that's kind of like this tech stack of all the things in one place. And I completely redid the website a second time in less than two years, which is, I don't recommend that, but it was cool. Can I show your, I, I have power to do this, but is it okay if I show, because when you're talking about your logo, I wanted to show it up yeah. on screen. 
Yeah, um, yeah, and, I, yeah, and I know you said you're working on your website right now. You've got a great website, I think. But this logo is kind of the intermixing of fire and water. Is that, mm -hmm. am I remembering that correctly? Yeah, you, you got it. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's the, the idea to remind me that when I'm on stage, I got to, I got to bring the heat. I got to fire people up. I got to just absolutely set a blaze in their belly. And it's when I'm off stage is to remind myself to be calm, to be cool, to be fluid, to be water, right. To show up yeah. and be all encompassing. And then, you know, I had, it's all based and I don't think you'll be able to see this, but I have a talisman around my neck that is water and air and fire in the same shape, right? In the same shape of yin yang to keep that that mm -hmm. harmony going. Um, and then I met a guy that does uh, basically took disc and mapped it to earth, air, water, and fire called behavioral elements. And you know, it's mm -hmm. a that's a block down on the page there, but it's like everything just kind of lines up to mm -hmm. help us with our behavior. Yeah. I love it. I think it's such a powerful brand look. And I did pop up on the screen. If anyone in the audience has any questions for Terry, or if you'd like to add your thoughts to the conversation, feel free to, to drop those in comments. I see we've got Annette and uh, Kenneth kind of popping back and forth in comments as well. And Kenneth just mentioned earlier, so important to know your limits and strength. You know, and a lot of us, you know, Kenneth, myself, you, Terry, we've learned this the hard way, but we've learned and we've gained experience and then experience is shaping us with who we are today, right? A hundred percent. And in Kenneth, unfortunately, gosh darn it, the only way to actually learn it is the hard way. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I think about all the times my mom or my dad told me a thing that was gonna happen, and and I was like, you guys are nuts. And then, right. you know, fast forward three, five, seven years, and then you had to go back and say, Gosh, you were really right about that. How did you know? We don't learn as well through others' experiences as we learn from our own, unfortunately, right? And so uh, when I talk about coaching, I'm like, listen, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to stand there with a flashlight and say, if you step there, you're going to fall into a hole that's 30 feet deep. If you step mm -hmm. two steps over to the right, it's like a like a people mover and you're going to get there faster. But, you know, the choice is going to be yours. I'll, I'll lower the rope when you step into the hole because you're stubborn. Right? But mm -hmm. just please get on the people mover. It's literally right there. Yeah, so true. And you and I both have, um, you know, kids that are now young adults. And you're probably this is probably really relatable to you as a parent. And it was to me because I can tell my son do this, don't do that. And he will not listen to me, but he'll, he'll watch it in a Ted talk. He'll see it on a YouTube video. He'll see some influencers saying the same thing and he'll come back and say, I should do this. And I'm like, I literally have been telling you this all along. Why are you not listening to me? It can be very frustrating, but here we go. And it's similar to, I think a lot of experiences we have as parents, we can relate to our coaching clients. I heard our good friend, Tina Marie Wolfield say this on stage once she did a talk and it was entitled something about how being a parent has made me a better, um, HR consultant coach. And there's so many things that we can relate from, from those perspectives. Any thoughts on that? I, I, I'm just grateful that it's that scenario because quite frankly, mm -hmm. some of the time I get called in the speaker presenter train is because the manager, or the leader is saying, I'm beating my face against the wall, trying to mm -hmm. convey this message and they're not hearing it. So maybe they'll hear it from you. Yeah. And they, and that's how it works, right? That, that third party delivery system is a value and, mm -hmm. you know, I'm happy to be that. Yeah. Sometimes you need it from the outside perspective coming in. And as we start to wrap up our conversation here today, Terry, I want to do a couple things. First, I want to pull up your LinkedIn um, profile up on screen. And a lot of you who are in Metro Detroit are probably familiar with the fact that Terry is um, very big in the TEDx Detroit community and um, part of the, the team that puts on that amazing event every year. And you can see the TEDx right in his, his background on his profile there. Now, Terry, are you open to connecting with anyone on LinkedIn? And do you have any instructions for people that want to connect with you? You know, it's funny. Up until about a year and a half ago, I could tell you that I'd only not connected with one person who said they were a six-month-old baby in their headline. Ah, um, that's funny. I've been a, 
I've been a little more discerning, but yeah, I, overall, I'm a very open networker on LinkedIn. Uh, darn near promiscuous, as it were. Mm -hmm. But I don't like, like everybody, I don't like being spammed four seconds later, right? I can do without that. Yeah, absolutely. Same. And um, I don't know if you know about this too, but they're moving away from creator mode and they're now giving us the ability to change our default button from follow to connect, even if you had that turned on. And I'm already connected with you, so I'm not sure if you have it on your profile or not. But do you know if people, when they visit your profile, is follow the default or do you have connect as the default? I think I think I went back to connect. I think I had follow for a long time, but maybe if someone in the audience isn't connected, yeah. then they could take a look and and tell us because it, you know you can only see what you can see. I guess I could go in the. It, do they still even have the view like others see your profile? Well, you can mode? you can view public profile, but it really shows you the logged out of LinkedIn version. So it says. Um, create a LinkedIn account or log into your LinkedIn account to see everything. So you're not going to see follow versus connect. Um, okay. Oh, Julie Bryant, Julie with the shout out here. Um, Julie, is this on Terry's profile? Are you seeing follow as his button or are you saying follow as the default or you're responding? We'll give, it takes about 30 seconds from the time I say this until the time that Julie hears it. And then another couple more seconds for Julie to type it in. So we'll wait and see if she comments back on it. But um, for those in the audience, the question is, the challenge for you right now is to go to Terry's profile, Terry Bean, and see if you're not connected to him, what is the button that you are seeing? Does it say follow or does it say connect? And Julie says yes, so I'm going to assume that means that she is looking at your profile and she is seeing follow. So if people want to connect with you, Terry, I always like to tell them, click on the more button. And then underneath that, you'll see an option that will either say personalize invite or connect. And that's the little backdoor way into connecting with our good friend Terry Bean here. We have 1987 mutual connections. Is we that have it? more mutual connections than the like half of the LinkedIn population has connections. <laughs> we know a lot of the same people. So it's great to see. And I see a lot of people kind of commenting and jumping in this now and letting us know, yes, that's the default button on there. Love All right. It. So I want to go back to your company page now, Terry, because I want to ask the question, Ooh. if people are interested in working with you and doing business with you, can you remind us what are those services and offerings that you have? I thought you were going to go to my LinkedIn company page. I was going to be embarrassed and ashamed. <laughs> so thank you for that. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, no. Oh, no. I have one, Brenda, because we don't like grayscale buildings, right? No. And I have the yeah. gray buildings. Um, but yeah, I don't use that well. Um, so my primary world, and it's so funny, I mentioned that I was going to be re revamping this. Um mm -hmm. The three things that I really focus on are developing people, developing their brand, right? And, and it's really the reach and the understanding and the getting the information out. And it's developing the team inside of the organization, right? Mm -hmm. So I coach, I train, and then I do a lot of keynote speaking. And, and if it was... If you said just do one, I would say I probably like keynote speaking a smidge better than coaching. Um, mm -hmm. But I really do enjoy both of those things quite a bit. And I like making that impact. And, and it's fascinating to me from a coaching perspective, because it, I used to have on my LinkedIn, it said, if you ask 10 people, what does Terry Bean do? You'll get 10 I smiles that. and nine different answers. And I thought that was so great. I was so proud of myself with all that cleverness. And then I realized that the joke was on me, right? That's not that's not a good way to stand out. But I'm a I'm a I'm a really good listener. Uh, you'll feel heard. I I have a huge capacity for understanding, so you'll feel mm -hmm. understood. And then I've got some really actionable ideas and. Uh, tips that I offer. And sometimes those are connections to people. And sometimes it's do this, do this and do this kind of stuff. Um, but that's the that's the world I plan. That's awesome. And um, by the way, I'm going to give a shout out to Terry being um, for his speaker reel as well. By the way, I don't know if you knew this, Terry, but whenever I refer to you inside my house, it's always Terry Bean. I never just say Terry. I'm not just going to go talk to my friend. If I ask my daughter right now, 
I'm going to talk to Terry. What's his last name? Bean. She will know you like that. Terry Bean. Terry Bean. She knows you. And you're like a celebrity. I don't just say Terry. I say Terry Bean. So for those of you who are not in the Terry Bean fan club yet and you haven't heard Terry speak on a stage, do yourself a favor and watch his um, speaker reel. You go to his website and just click under, I think it was under speaking. Um, it's the first video in there. And I think he did a really nice job of capturing the essence of what you do and the value you deliver on stages to audience. And, and just a bit of that magic for those of you who haven't had the, the pleasure of, of seeing Terry talk. But if you get the chance to see Terry Bean at a live event, do yourself a favor and go because you will leave feeling inspired, connected, and um, just gaining really great insight. So I just really want to I think I've given you a recommendation saying all of these things. If not, I'm going to like pull the transcript and like drop a recommendation into you as soon as we're on here today. Do you know, I didn't know this until recently, but you can feature a recommendation on your LinkedIn profile. You know that, yeah. of course. But did you know that my featured recommendation on LinkedIn as of like three weeks ago is a recommendation you wrote? <gasps> I did not. This is yeah. like news. You're hearing this here first, everyone. So wait, let's let's demonstrate. We're going to do a quick little LinkedIn uh, demo for our audience before we wrap up here today. So I'm going to go to your profile right now. And some people may not even be aware that you can do this. And gosh, since you're telling me, I want to show it in action here. So I'm on your profile. So you're saying it's in your featured section? It should be in my featured section, oh. yeah. Oh my there goodness, you all, look at this. This is exciting, right there, featured. So this was in 2019. And the same thing, I, I you know, I, I think I've said it in the show here today. Um, you're one of the first people I saw on social media when social media was getting bigger. And that's really cool to see. So... So you selected that and put that in your featured section as one of your recommendations. That's great. I did. I didn't. It, I was messing around in LinkedIn. And, and, and to be fair, right, when I became a social media expert 15, 16 years ago, it was because mm -hmm. I wasn't afraid to push a button. Right. I didn't think right. it was going to blow anything up. That was the secret to expertise all those years ago. And so I yeah. saw this and I'm like, well, what does this do? Click. Hey, <laughs> Now Brenda's yeah. got her own featured spot on my profile. Oh, I'm blushing. That's so nice. Thank you, Terry. It's and it's kind of almost like an Easter egg, like when you're watching a movie and they put something in there as a nod to something else, and you're like, oh, you kind of notice that. Thank you like for the doing guys that. from um, Trading Places being and coming to America, right? Exactly. They were, they were total bums, and it was such a great Easter egg. Absolutely. Well, Terry, it has been such a delight. And I'm hoping um, that folks that are watching, whether in live or in playback, or maybe listening to this on the podcast later, will reach out and connect with you. And I just want to say thank you again. Um, I'm not sure when we'll see each other again, but we've been talking about, you know, getting together for a brunch or maybe an upcoming event, we'll see each other in person. But I just want to say thank you so much for coming on and joining me here today. Truly a pleasure. You're amazing. Thank you for having me. And if I can be of service to you or those that support you or those you support, I'm here for it. Always. Awesome. Thank you, Terry. And for those that are watching us, if you enjoyed the conversation here today, we would love if you could do a favor. And that is this. As soon as the video is done playing inside of LinkedIn, at the bottom, you'll see a little share icon. So click to share. And it's a really great technique, especially if you haven't posted in a really long time, maybe not in the past week, not in the past month, maybe not even in the past year. You can click to share it along. And when you do so, if you use the at sign, you can tag Terry and at Brenda Muller, tag both of us in there. Then we'll get notification that you talked about us. We'll come and jump in and add a comment on it. And maybe when you share that video along, share something that you learned. Maybe you are at the start of your self-employed journey and you're getting some inspiration and some courage for saying no to the wrong clients at the beginning or getting your website up and going or building your network with coopetition, if you will, or, or others that are there. So whatever those key takeaways are, include those in there. And you never know who you're going to help with that. And, and going back to that karma element, Terry, of kind of paying it forward and helping others, right? Absolutely. And that's the way to do it. I love that. I love it. Good. Well, thank you all for watching. Thank you, Terry, for being on. And I wish everyone a wonderful day and stay connected out there, everyone. Take care.